Hello, lovelies. Welcome back to Female Sexual Energy. And today we're going to talk about the female orgasm and how it's just not fair. That's right. For once, it is not fair and not fair to our benefit. Woohoo! <laughs> how good is that? Orgasm for us is a win win situation. I know when I first started on my sexual journey with Chance and we were learning to separate his orgasms from his ejaculation, that I didn't know what I was supposed to do with mine. Do I stop mine too? What am I supposed to do? Well, at that time, I really did not know, but now I do. And so I I'm going to dive into a little traditional Chinese medicine to give you some theory in order to understand the situation just a little bit better. Now, most people are familiar with qi, but what is less known is that qi is just one element in what traditional Chinese medicine refers to as the three treasures. Qi, Jing, and Shen together form the foundation for understanding the human body and the healing practices of traditional Chinese medicine. In English, they've been translated as essence for Jing, vitality for Qi, and spirit for Shen. Jing is the most solid, substantial energy, while Qi is more kinetic, flowing, and fluid, and Shen, the body's more refined or ethereal energy. Although interconnected today, we are going to look at the first treasure, or the superior ultimate treasure, which is Jing. Jing is a powerful substance that forms the essence of who and what we are. Jing is responsible for both the essential immaterial, the soul, and the essential physical being, the body. It circulates through the eight major vessels where it helps create semen, menstrual blood, and bone marrow. It is the primal energy of our life. In Nadan, or Taoist internal alchemy that we get into in Season 2 of Magical Egypt, it determines one ultimate vitality and the quantity and quality of one's lifespan due to the idea that death results from the depletion of one's jing. Nadan suggests that preserving jing allows one to achieve longevity, if not immortality. In Taoism, everyone is born with a certain amount of innate jing in their bank account that would be spent like money simply by living life, for example. <laughs> but the Taoists also knew of ways to increase the levels of jing, sex being one of them. Sex enabled the transformation of the sexual essence into qi and jing through the harmonious intermingling of yin and yang. The woman was identified as the crucible and her vital essence with cinnabar, while the man's white semen was identified with lead. Coitus, then, was the mixing of the elements to produce more raw material for the alchemical process. Jing can be lost in many ways, but most notably through the loss of body fluids. Taoists go to great lengths to stimulate or increase and conserve their bodily fluids and jing. The fluid believed to contain the most jing was semen. In men, ejaculation is a direct but temporary loss of jing, as sperm is derived directly from the jing. Sperm is qian gui in Chinese traditional medicine, translated to kidney essence, whereas qian gui or kidney essence in women is menstrual blood and ovarian follicles and eggs. During orgasm, accompanied by ejaculation, men lose sperm. But women do not generally lose menstrual blood. As there is no comparable loss of qing in women, there is no equivalent depletion after sex. And this is the primary reason behind ejaculation control and semen retention for the Taoist male alchemist. In addition to semen retention, Taoist male alchemists attempting the collection of female essence by 
by absorbing female energy to supplement the energy lost through aging and sexual expenditure. According to Dower's Sex Manual, a popular exposition of the methods of regenerating the primary vitalities, whew, that's a name, the female essence available for collection arises at three places. The saliva of the mouth, the perspiration of the breasts, and the vaginal secretions directly from the jade fountain or vagina. But just as in tantric thought, this female elixir was only produced when a woman had an orgasm. Therefore, man had to ensure the woman was genuinely eager and fully ready, which ensured that erotic foreplay was a staple of the alchemist's bedchamber, although potentially motivated by self-interest. After a woman's jing was released upon orgasm, the male would inhale her chi from the nostrils and absorb the secretions below, the nostrils being the gate of heaven and the gate of life below. For best results, one inhaled and absorbed from above and below at the same time. Regarding the vaginal juices, the manual states they are the peak of the purple agaric, the grotto of the white tiger, or the mysteries of the gateway. The medicine is called black lead. But what about women, you might ask? That's why we're here. <laughs> Orgasms may benefit men, but they also benefit us as well. In Dower's thought, women seem to have an extraordinary win-win situation. Not only are they understood to gain energy and longevity from their own orgasm, but they can also nourish themselves by a man's essence too. This is called Kai Yan Pu Yin found in the philosophy and practice of the White Tigress teachings, an ancient Chinese sexual tradition propagated and maintained through a long stream of consorts and female Taoists. Now, full disclosure on this one, I have spent a lot of time trying to track down this <laughs> White Tigress group kind of wanted to get some one-on-one -on -one instruction here, but I have not been able to do it. And this book that I am quoting from is written by a male, and so I really don't know. So that's my disclaimer here, but I'm going to continue on with what it says because it is interesting, but possibly my lack of you know what? I actually studied Chinese, the Chinese language, Mandarin, in primary school. And I was so bad at it that I thought being able to say, I'm sorry, I don't understand in Mandarin would get me a passing grade in my Chinese exam. <laughs> <gasps> Lord, it didn't work. So trying to find this in its original language is beyond me. So we're just going to take all of this with a grain of salt. However, the White Tigress text claims that women have their own unique process for acquiring Taoism's spiritual and physical goals, namely restoring youthfulness. Who doesn't want that? And a gaining immortality and longevity. Mm. Thinking about that one a little bit more. The theory they maintain is that males are yang by nature, physically strong, active, and express their sexual functions externally. And so they need to exercise tranquility and retention of sexual energy to achieve youthfulness and immortality. On the other hand, women are yin by nature, physically weaker, they say. I don't know about that, but more passive and express their sexual functions internally. And so we need to exercise activity and expression of sexual energy to achieve the goals of youthfulness and immortality. The white tigress is known to harvest male sexual energy and does so in two primary oral acts. In the first act, called Congealing the Dragon's Jade, she makes use of male semen to restore her skin and hair. In the second act, which is of greater 
greater importance than the first. She focuses on the absorption of male sexual energy, referred to as absorbing the dragon's breath, for developing a heightened state of hypersensitivity during intense oral sexual stimulation of the male penis, called the jade stem in Chinese. Absorption is the ability to mentally and physically induce the energy of the male orgasm into herself, whereby she then uses the masculine energy to both fortify and enhance her own feminine energy, and this is the transformational use of sexual activity. The practice of absorbing dragon's breath leads to spiritual attainment of illumination, the manual says. And to know if you're getting it right, you will experience the seeing of numerous small lantern lights swaying inside the head. Now, I have never got there, so I cannot speak to that. And they say the white tigress needs to experience this photonic effect nine times to achieve illumination. Now, in series three of Magical Egypt, when we were looking at the Kundalini experience, photonic effects are something that are quite common in people that are having their Kundalini raised. So there is some justification and evidence for this idea of photonic effects. So who knows? Within the White Tigress Manual and in Japanese geisha documents as well, it says with each act of intensely performing oral sex and congealing of semen, the White Tigress increases her lifespan by seven days. Again, I don't know. With those experiences where she enters into deep contemplation of observing sexual male energy, she increases her lifespan by 28 days. With each act of engaging in sexual intercourse, her lifespan is decreased by seven days. The origin of the white tiger's teachings, as far as the author is concerned, appears to be derived from instructions given to the Yellow Emperor through three female attendants of the Western Royal Mother. Now, these girls come up a lot in this literature, and um, I have another book. We'll get into them later, but these, these three ladies are all over this material. The Western Royal Mother, who in Chinese mythical history is supposedly the matriarch of the Chinese civilization. Her three female attendants, plain girl, multi-hued girl, and mysterious girl, each provided sexual instruction to the Yellow Emperor so that he might regain his health and attain immortality. The Western Royal Mother herself reportedly attained immortality through gathering and absorbing the sexual essence of 1,200 males. <laughs> Sounds like Wu Zaitan that I mentioned in episode one that's also in season two. She was a very interesting woman. From the White Tigress Manual, there is the following descriptive quote of the Western Royal Mother as given by the mysterious girl to the Yellow Emperor. Western Royal Mother obtained immortality through restoring her feminine energy. Her energy became so strong that when she lured a man's jade stem, near her mouth, with even one union he would feel exhausted, while her face glowed radiantly and with his essence upon it. She no longer had need for any type of cosmetic. She could absorb the essence of a hundred men without causing herself any exhaustion, as her body was like that of a young girl full of vitality and stamina. The spiritual mother had no use for husbands, loving men the way they wished to be loved, and knowing the secret of yin convergence, the secret of immortality, made her an immortal. Now, I want to say here that uh, this sounds rather vampiric, doesn't it? And also the practices of the males that had the concubines. However, as they said, they could only achieve their goals if the women had an orgasm as well. So they needed to be carefully looked after. <laughs> However, I don't suggest anybody engage in vampiric activities. This is for intellectual purposes only. And it's crazy right? Crazy. Well, does it work? Does it work? is the question of the day. And at 56, I am going to say that I do all the wrong things as much as I like to pretend that I don't. And I think I look pretty damn okay for 56. And look, let's get real. <laughs> 
What is the worst thing that could happen, right? <laughs> Thank you for listening, lovelies. And if you like this podcast and would like to support us, please go to MagicalEgypt.com. And I have made a special special discount coupon just for you all and the coupon code is love and that will get you $30 off any magical Egypt purchase. Also, um, I've started a Patreon so you can mosey on over there and uh, see if you want to contribute. But I appreciate you listening and I appreciate all your support and more soon. <laughs> 